constitute all of them. The food, the, the buildings, the architecture, the design of the town. A town that was going to be dedicated to the future, that was trying to invoke a new consciousness and bring it down upon earth. If you look at human thought from the time human thought has awakened, the idea of creating a, a piece of earth that would be dedicated to the highest aspiration that human beings have, a city of God on earth, a place where people could build a new mind and body. This has been a dream that has been there for centuries. It has expressed itself in moments and it has never survived. Orville is 52 years today and that in itself is miraculous because to have a piece of earth this difficult, travail-filled earth, full of problems still, a piece of earth that is dedicated to the future, to an invocation that calls down the highest powers, powers that are beyond the present consciousness of human beings, that we can have a piece of consecrated land is quite miraculous, but it needs help. Mother was very practical and one of the first things she said was buy the lands. Not because Orville wants to be the biggest landowner in the area, but because the land is consecrated to the future. It's not also as if the Orvillians are that brilliant. We haven't achieved the consciousness that would manifest Orville. It's a progressive journey and we are taking only the first steps. Mother and Shabindo at different moments talk about hundreds of years. But still, to have a piece of land that's concentrated, it would be wonderful if the government of India would help us to secure this land. Not for the Aurovillians, but for the consecration to the future that Auroville represents. For the dream that it represents. So this moment where we are gathered here, where Her Excellency, the Lieutenant Governor of Pondicherry, has come to help us begin this journey, Art for land is a moment to wish for securing all the lands of all of it. There are a couple of lines in Samitri. 
the massive barrier breakers of the world, the wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will. They remind me of you, Madam Governor, because you have broken enormous barriers. Dr. Kiran Bedi was the first Indian woman who became a member of the Indian police force. She opened a pathway for all the women who followed after. Today there are hundreds of women police officers, but to be the first, you have to break a lot of barriers. So in 1972, when you joined the police force, you were already a very powerful, well-known tennis player. You could have had other career paths, but you chose to open this pathway. And only the barrier breaker knows what barriers need to be broken. So we thank you for this work you have done for the country. And in all the years when you were in the police force, you were constantly bringing transformation and change, policing with the people. One of the most wonderful moments in your career was when you became the Inspector General of the Harji, which has more, almost 9,000, I'm not sure what the figure is presently, but when you were there, it was 9,000 prisoners. And you reformed that prison, you brought ideas that the whole world was looking at. And in recognition for that, we were given the Raman Magsaysay Award, which is the Asian Award, which is kind of like the Asian Nobel Prize. You have always led from the front. And so the second line of Savitri, the wrestlers with destiny in her list of will. Shabita doesn't use the word fate, he uses will. And that's one thing, when I think of you, the willpower you have. You're always leading from the front. So this is a good sign for us in Oregon because we also are trying to break barriers. We are trying to create a new society. We're not succeeding always so well. It's hard to live together without hierarchies. It's hard to seek sincerity. And Oregon manifests if we can manifest that sincerity, which is our aspiration for the future. So, welcome to Oregon, welcome to Art for Land, and I would invite you to say a few words. It is a spiritual moment, a moment which doesn't need words as much as silence. Because it's linked with beauty, and beauty demands silence, reflection, going within. And all where it stands for me is a place of beauty, a place of, place of peace, a place of harmony, a place of reflection, a place of recovery, a place of contribution, a place which can be, which is a destination for many souls yearning for something which you gave me this morning, the nutrition. Where is the nutritionist? <laughs> there you are. We've heard him at the Raj Nivas as well. I wish I had known that you take contributions like this from so many contributors. We have within at Raj Nivas also an artist, a very great artist, who's probably on my left or right. When I get up at 6, 6.15 out in the gallery of Raj Nivas, it's just trees. It's palm, it's sunlight, it's beautiful color. Every day the color of the sky is different. It's got purple, it's got gray, it's got white, it's got such a mixture. And I shoot it. And whether you want to watch it or not, I send it to all my friends. <laughs> I actually, they wake up with my photograph. Sometimes it's a chirping of a bird, sometimes it's a crow flying in, sometimes it's just <coughs> over my national flag, the birds. So I do all these things. Anyway, photograph if you have a place, then they'll be competing. I've got so many. <laughs> and that too, Lalit Sissi. And they are adorning the walls of Raj Nivas. You're welcome to come and see and then judge them, which is fit for Orwell, which should be good for him. So I would be happy. So I'm a part of art in some form or the other. Actually, I begin with art every morning. 
because Rajnivas is also a place of art. It's a place of natural art. Every day the moon looks different. Every day the sunrise and the sunbeams come differently. And I keep photographing the beams. I photograph and I just get sometimes I feel after a while it's a repetition. But nature repeats after a while. It's an after a while. The beam entering my bedroom is a perfect piece of art. I did it. Who do you want? Who, who do you have a group which I can send you once or one for? Do you have a group? Art for land. Art for land. Yes, art for land at okay. Dr. I'll send you some. You can look at them. So friends, thank you so much for bringing me to a place of peace and harmony and longevity. You are, a, you are a very important attraction for Puducherry. For the reason, the economy of Puducherry is a lot linked to the economy of Oro, the place and positioning of Oro. They don't know you are in Tamil Nadu. They think you are in Pondicherry. <laughs> Absolutely not. And anybody, any traveler, any tourist, as you know, the tourism, the population of Puducherry is let's say 14 lakhs. And our tourists is also crossing 14 lakhs. And a lot of it comes because of two, the Oroville and the Ashram. And then when they have time, they walk the beach. So three things are economy of Puducherry is you, the ashram and the beach. Now beach we maintain, we clean. <laughs> ashram is maintained by mother herself and Sri and Sri Aurobindo. And Auroville is again mother's blessings. See, it's mother all, all the way through for us. So it's mother taking care of the economy and livelihood and quality of life of Puducherry. Thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity. You've been addressing me as Excellency. I'm not Excellency. I'm not Excellency. I'm just a simple Kiran baby. So please take away the word Excellency from here. But I will move towards Excellency. <laughs> but thanks a lot. Great food. Um, we would like to introduce you to the whole program that's ahead, Art for Land. I invite Jaya to speak. It feels a little bit more difficult, but afterwards you have that flush and flow of grace in you because you actually took a step further than yourself also. We do all the ways now. Uh, Art for Land, I actually, I first was going to do a message from Mandakini. Mandakini, together with Ariadi and Sikri, were the people who initiated the Acres for Orwe, which is the big umbrella for fundraising for the land. Uh, together with um, Jasmine and Aravinda, she initiated Art for Land, I think, six years ago now. So she has given a message to them to me. When we started Acres for Oroville, we were certain of the need, but not sure if the campaign would work. Acres for Oroville is now in its sixth year, and I'm extremely happy to see that it has taken root, created awareness, and enthusiastic support. And I salute this fifth edition of the Art for Land, which is now itself a highly anticipated annual event and a significant support for Acres for Oroville's fundraising. As the mother said, a harmonious collective aspiration can change the course of circumstances. And yes, we see that solidarity works. So then I wanted to say something else about them. about the way that Acres for Oroville and the people who work with the land are working. It is very easy to favor one's own project. It's really like certain things, we associated with certain other things. And I was very, very happy when Mandakini sent me the information, and this Rainer will be speaking about more afterwards, the information about how the funds that are coming in are being used. So, they are looking at two, four, six different areas. So food sustainability, it means procuring land which is related to, to, to farming. Yeah. Then we have the water resourcing in line with Orbe's tradition of green leadership in the bioregion. Areas which are water sensitive are a priority also. Housing, to create housing. For the people who come, we have had several housing projects for young people, which means that they get a, a studio free. Huh? 
Then we have the city area infrastructure. That means that that the CSR in the, those areas of the city, the, the industrial area, international zone, etc., and consolidation, very much also related to matrimonial and other sensitive spots. So myself, when I saw this, I felt like, yay! We are actually supporting everybody in their field of works. We are looking after everything. It's an integral approach. Because in the beginning, some people felt like, oh, the city area is so important, matrimonial is so important. Other people feel, no, Green Belt is important. Everybody under the same umbrella is being looked after. I want to honor that myself. Thank you to the people who work with this. This um, recent case, this was Mother's early message. When I was a young child, I had the honor and privilege of growing up here and uh, being part of this wonderful adventure. So this is what it looked like from nearly anywhere you could see the ocean. And we used to have these terrific dust storms and then the monsoon used to come and the sea used to turn red. So this was the barren landscape that left a lot of room for one's imagination about what Oregon could be. Thanks. As you can see, this is the uh, urn being, being built, and it also gives you an idea of the horizon and what it looks like, and the banyan tree at the center of Oregon. This is when the urn was being constructed in the early days. Yes. This is when the matrimonia started uh, being built. This is the office area that still exists. And once again, now this is several years later, banyan tree is here, and this is looking northwards. But you still get an idea of, of the emptiness around. This is what it looks like today, 52 years later.